There's been a lot of discussion this week about the announcement of former President Joe Biden's um, diagnosis with metastatic prostate cancer. And while I have no interest or desire to comment on anything um, political or conspiratorial, um, I think there is a lot to talk about here. And this is an illustrative case, uh, in my mind at least, of how Medicine 2.0 has gone awry um, and why we should use this as an opportunity to talk about maybe a different way to practice medicine. So. Um, what appears to be the case, at least as of this moment when I'm sitting here making this recording, is that the last time that uh, President Biden had a PSA level checked um, was at about the age of 72. Uh, now, to be clear, um, that is within the guidelines. The guidelines say that once a man hits 70, the decision to do a PSA for screening is, is somewhat optional and really uh, largely based on a discussion that the patient can have with his doctor. Now, I've never really understood the arguments against it other than the um, uh, misinterpretation of data and the failure to look at uh, PSA data more closely. So it is true, I think, that if you look at PSA and PSA alone, it can be a very misleading um, protein or biomarker uh, that can lead to false positives and false negatives, which of course are the main problem we care about when uh, trying to screen for cancer. But we can't lose sight of the fact that cancer is the second leading cause of death. Prostate cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death among men. And unlike many other forms of cancer, this one is actually really preventable because of the pace at which it develops and the newer and newer tools that we have to predict which of those prostate cancers are non-lethal, which means they're gonna stay in the prostate, they're not gonna leave, versus which ones are going to be lethal, which means they have the ability to leave and spread, and they almost always spread to the bone, which is unfortunately exactly what has happened to President Biden. Okay, so what would you do? Well, you would look at not just the PSA every year, which is what I would recommend, but you would also look at something called the PSA velocity which measures, as its name suggests, the rate of change of PSA. And the higher the PSA velocity, which I think makes sense, the faster the rate of change or increase of PSA, the more likely that you might be dealing with a cancer, even absent a very high absolute PSA. The second thing we want to consider is what's called PSA density. This is where you take the PSA and you divide it by the prostate volume. So if the PSA density, uh, pardon me, if the PSA is measured in nanograms per deciliter, which it typically is, you divide that by the prostate volume in milliliters and you will get a number. If that number is large, typically over 0.15, we start to get a little bit concerned. So the more dense the PSA is, uh, the, meaning PSA divided by uh, volume, uh, the, the more we are concerned. The final thing that you can get from this remarkable $5 test, that's right, $5 a year is what it's going to cost you to get a PSA, is your free PSA. And the percentage of the free PSA also tells you your likelihood as to whether or not um, this is a, um, um, a potentially uh, uh, dangerous uh, a PSA that's arising from a dangerous set of prostate cells or, or not. So you have these three things that you're getting for free, right? You have from the PSA, you're getting the absolute number, you're getting the PSA velocity, the PSA density, and the free PSA. Um, and if all of that is pointing you in a direction that is leading you to be inconclusive or causing concern, you can do additional tests like a PHI or a 4K, which admittedly are more expensive blood tests, but they do even more to further elucidate the risk. Of course, this can be all followed up with a multiparametric MRI, which might be the gold standard before you would progress to a biopsy. So why didn't they do any of these things? Well, I think one reason comes down to, again, the failure of medicine 2.0, which tends to rely on actuarial data of life expectancy. That's it. And it says, look, if you're a 72-year-old man, which is apparently the age at which um, President Biden was last tested, it says, look, your life expectancy is X number of years. It's less than 15, actuarially. Um, and this is you know, relatively slow-moving cancer, all things considered, so we should do nothing about it. But yet here we are, it's 11 years later, and he has a very aggressive form of prostate cancer. And so two things turned out to be incorrect. One, we didn't actually know what his life expectancy was, but more importantly, we placed an emphasis on lifespan over health span. And this is the part that really grinds my gears about Medicine 2.0, is it says nothing about the quality of life. Now, 
obviously I can't speak from personal experience, but metastatic bone cancer, having spoken to many patients who have had this and doctors who have treated this, is debilitating. Men experience this with prostate cancer, women experience this with breast cancer. You know, why would we say, well, you know, this is an acceptable outcome when it could have been completely prevented? So again, I, I wanna point out that unfortunately, we are in a, in my mind, a transition period between um, a, a more rapid adoption of Medicine 3.0 principles. And what that means is that each one of you has to be your own advocate here. Each one of you has to be the one to say, you know what? I understand that there are risks of screening. I understand that there are risks of false positives, but I am confident enough, at least in the case of this particular test and the derivative tests that we can derive ancillary to it, that I want to take a more aggressive posture in making sure that I don't succumb to what I believe is truly an unforced error. I can't say this for all forms of cancer. In fact, I can't say this for most forms of cancer, but for prostate cancer, for colorectal cancer, we can absolutely say that screening will undoubtedly save lives if done correctly.